Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my precious brothers and sisters. Thank you for this opportunity once again to come in your midst to share the word of God together with you. Really, this is such a beautiful time of grace and mercy. Come, my brothers and sisters, as we begin, let us sign ourselves with the cross of Jesus. In the name of the Father, Father in heaven, we ask you to be with us this morning. We cannot do anything without you. You are the sail on our ship, Lord, because without you, we cannot do anything. But with you, all things are possible. We ask you for your Holy Spirit today. And whatever we say, whatever we do, that your spirit may lead us to the glory of you. And so together, we ask you, Jesus, to cover us all, with our families and everything, with your precious Jesus, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray together, my precious brothers and sisters, the unity prayer. My adorable yeah. Jesus. My adorable, my adorable Jesus. Jesus. May our feet journey together. May yeah. our feet journey, our feet together. journey yeah. together. May our hands gather in unity. May, May our hands gather, gather in unity. unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May, May our, our hearts, hearts beat, beat, beat in, in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May, May our, our souls be, be in harmony. harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our, May our thoughts be as, as, one. One. as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May, May our, ears our ears listen, listen to, the silence, to the, silence the silence together. May our glance profoundly penetrate each other. May our May glance, our glance profoundly, profoundly penetrate, penetrate each, each other. other. May our lips pray together. May, May our, our lips, lips, lips pray, pray together, together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. To, to gain, gain mercy, mercy from, from the Eternal, eternal Father. Father. Amen. 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 Hail Mary, full of grace. Full of grace the Lord, Lord is with you. Lord is with you. Blessed, blessed are you. Blessed are you. And bless you of your womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, of God, Mother of God, pray for us for sinners, us now, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. It's Praise such a great, great experience to be here this morning with you again. Today, my brothers and sisters, I will be talking about faithfulness. Sometimes we take so many things for granted. We know it. We are doing it. But it's time sometimes to go back to the basics, which is actually the root of our walking with Jesus. And so, my precious brothers and sisters, let us recapitulate. What is faithfulness? We could define faithfulness, my brothers and sisters, as being trustworthy, reliable, dependable, and taking one's responsibility seriously. This applies, my brothers and sisters, to every task with duty and to every relationship we are in. If we had to give it a single word of definition, we could say it as loyalty, faithfulness, trustworthy, and loyal. It means sticking to a task or to a relationship or to a work or to anything that God has given us and doing it to our very best. Yes, my brothers and sisters, many a man proclaims that he is loyal, he is truthful, he is honest, he is faithful. But a faithful man who can find, my brothers and sisters, there has become a shortage right now. That is why it's so expensive. When you go to the markets now, certain vegetables and fruits are like sky-rising prices. Why? Because they are scarce. You go to buy onions sometimes in the market, you see 
what it was 30 and 40 rupees, you see them are 80 rupees, 90 rupees, 100 rupees and above. Why? Because when there is a shortage of something, it becomes hard to find and it is more expensive. So to find a faithful person these days, a true and faithful person, it is really expensive. It is really scarce. And God is looking, always searching for a faithful one. That's why we see, my brothers and sisters, in Proverbs 20, verse 6, I will look with favor on the faithful in the land and they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. Yes, my brothers and sisters, God is looking on anyone who is faithful with favorably. He looks at them with favor and he wants them to walk with him, to be with him, to dwell in his presence. For he who walks in the way that is blameless and faithful shall be ministering to him because we in turn are rewarded for our faithfulness. He wants to use us so that souls can come back to the Lord in every aspect of our life without fail. And so my brothers and sisters, who could be the best example of our faithfulness? We see, can we please read, somebody please read Psalm 15 verses 1 to 5 please. Is there anyone there to read? It is. Thank you, oh Sister God, Who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Who walk as you and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart? Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends? not take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who, who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their vote even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Amen. Amen. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is what God is calling us to. The main person with whom we need to be faithful first is with God, with the one who created us in his image and likeness. He is always our first priority. But he also wants you and me to be faithful in every area of our life and with every person in our life. That is why we see here that who may dwell in the sacred tent of the Lord? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one who walks is blameless, whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous. A righteous person, a truthful person is a faithful person who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor who casts no slur on others, who despises, oh, who does not despise others, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps the promise that God has given him to keep, and to keep accountability with each other, who lends money without interest, and who does not accept bribes or give bribes. All these things are the faithful person who will not be moved and with these kind of people, God is searching. He's searching for the faithful one these days. The faithful one to build the bridge between God and man. To bring back what God wants. To so many means of intercession, prayer, sacrifice. Denying yourself, taking up your cross daily and following him. No matter what. Mother Teresa, as she would always teach us, my child, she would say. if Even if you fail... God has not called you always to be successful, even if you falter. But God has called you to be faithful. Yes, my brothers and sisters, it is faithfulness which is holiness. Because we are human, we err, we fail, we fall. But faithfulness, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians, we see, is that faithfulness 
to come back and to come back and to ever come back to that author and perfecter of our faith, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who was so faithful. He's the epitome of faithfulness. Yes, my brothers and sisters, who is the faithful one? We see who we should follow with every fiber of our being, with every conscientiousness, with every alertness, and he is none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord, God, and Savior. Kindly, sister, please read Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within the Lord's family. Yes, Amen. my brothers and sisters, this is it. This is it that he revealed himself as the one who is so faithful. Consider the extraordinary faithfulness of Jesus. He showed when he stuck to his plan of going to the cross and allowing himself to be struck down. He stuck to this plan that the Father gave him to go to the cross and be crucified for you and me. This was his faithfulness. He could have called it off or saved himself from it at any time. He was the son of God, right? But Jesus never did it. He voluntarily went through with all of it for your sake and my sake so that we could be reconciled to the Father, that our souls may be saved, that we may come back to the Lord. That was his faithfulness in the most extreme form. In considering how to grow in faithfulness, we have to look at this. We have to see the truthfulness and the honesty and the forbearance and the, and the faithfulness of the fight to go and do the work. He was tempted to uh, let the, 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 this chalice of suffering pass, but he never let it. He never let it go. He hung on to it even in the Garden of Gethsemane. For us to grow, we have to resemble the character and the nature of his son, Jesus Christ. That's a very ambitious project, but we can do it because the Holy Spirit of God is with us to enable us. He is the paraclete who is alongside of us to help us every step of the way to be faithful, my brothers and sisters. This is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5 that we see, the gift of faithfulness. I mean, the fruit of faithfulness. It is listed there because it is one of the key defining qualities of God's own character. He himself is totally faithful. He never breaks a promise and he never lets anybody down. God the Father wants us to be like his son. That is why God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Let us just look back and see some of the characters who are the faithful ones. We, When the three Hebrew children, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were thrown into the fiery furnace because of their faithfulness to God, King Nebuchadnezzar came to witness their execution. But what did the king see when the furnace this is burning so brightly and hot and fiery. He was stunned, my brothers and sisters. We know the story. To see not three, but four men in the fire. And in an innermost heart, he recognized the fourth man in the fire. It was none other than maybe at that point of time, they didn't know Jesus, but the, the Holy One of God. Today, who is the Son of God, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Let the Holy Spirit write this in your heart and my heart today. Jesus will never leave us. Jesus will never forsake us. He will be with us even when we go to the fire. He will not let the fire burn us. Even if we go to the flood, our Jesus, who is a faithful God, will never let us be drowned. He is with us 
every moment of the day. That's why his name, Emmanuel, means God is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Enable and allow the Holy Spirit of God now to write it in your heart as I allow him to write it in my heart. As I cling to it, Jesus is with me always in my good times and in my bad times. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this whole story is in Daniel 3, 19 and 25, which you can read later on. But this was the summary of the story. The king was amazed to see the faithfulness of the God who they trusted in because they did not want to bend down to any idol that was lifted up to them other than the God, their, their Lord God Almighty, who they believed in. God's faithfulness we see in Genesis 6 when Noah and his faithfulness of story, Noah did what God told him to do in spite of the fun the people made of him because he was considered to be drunk. But he took all the persecutions, all the, 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 the way they made fun of him and he made the, the big Noah's ark. But why did God do it in his faithfulness? He wanted to save Noah and his family and his creation so that he could start it all over again because the sin had overwhelmed that entire world by then. Though at the end of it, God really regretted doing this. That's why he gave that rainbow to show his faithfulness that he will never again let this happen. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we even see Daniel, a person being faithful to God. It's a long thing in the book of Daniel 6, 1 to 28. Let me just summarize it with you so I can go ahead. The reason being that Daniel is in the lion's den because lion's den because he broke the law not to pray to any other god apart from the his own holy god, which he believed in, which he prayed. People looked at him as a man of God, a holy man of God. He refused to go before any other idol or before the king to bow down and give him that honor. It was only God he wanted to do it too. This means that the king already, the king actually recognized Daniel as a holy man. Okay. But Daniel had a testimony of his love and dedication to God and to those around him. So Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And what happened? In the lion's den, he remained faithful to God. He kept on worshipping and praising God, even with those hungry lions were all around him. And what did God do in a reward to him? He bound the mouths of those lions and, and disabled them to even come near him. They all went to one corner. And further, you see in the community Bible, Daniel 14.32. I don't know if you have it because it's in the, it's in the new community Bible. It's sometimes not found in the RSV Bible. But Daniel 14.32 in the community Bible says that Habakkuk was making stew to take it to the reapers in the field. When suddenly the angel of God appeared to him and the angel of God tells him, do not go there, but take this stew to Babylon where Daniel is in the den, he's hungry. And Habakkuk is wondering, how can I go there it's so far and I don't know the way. But God was so faithful to Dan Daniel again. He knew Daniel was hungry. So he takes this Habakkuk by the crown of his head and takes him to the edge of the Daniel's den, the lion's den where Daniel was, and fed Daniel. He called her, Daniel, Daniel, come. The Lord has brought me here to give you food. And then the angel of God takes the angel back, uh, Habakkuk back to the place where he was in. Yes, Daniel praised God for his great faithfulness to him. Even that minute detail of Daniel's need, God remembered. My brothers and sisters, why are we sharing all this? It goes for us too. When we see Shadak, Meksha and Abednego, we are also faced with so many things today in this world that we discern where is our God in it? Where is Jesus in it? Where is the will of God in it? Like Shadak, Mesha and Abhignago, we do not bow before the worldly things, the new technologies, the new things that are happening in this world, which is so deceptive. 
we also have to pay the price of being faithful to God, my brothers and sisters, in spite of fire and persecution and burning, whatever the world is doing in reaction to us not going, again, going against their laws. We see with Noah, when God tells us to do something, it may look foolishness to the world, but we will do it nevertheless with the discernment of the Holy Spirit. We see in here in Daniel, he was faithful to God. He did not bow down to idols. We have so many idols in our life, my brothers and sisters. Are we faithful to God and not bowing down to those idols of pride, of anger, of um, revenge, of unforgiveness? All this is our pride and anger. Do we make them idols in our lives and allow them like the lions to devour us? Or do we stand, stand tall in the presence of God, worshipping him, asking for his Holy Spirit to overcome our weaknesses, our, our sinfulness, all these grips of uh, demons in our life, of the seven capital sins, our laziness, our pride, our anger, our ego, our gluttony, our greed, our power. We want power, we want name, we want fame. I want this. Why did you forget me? Give me this. I want to be here. You never put me here. Why you left me out? All this, my brothers and sisters, could be also. God has put us into this world to test us. Not to test us so that he can see how we are fast. No. Every testing that God gives us is to see our heart, to see the disposition of our heart. How are we taking this testing that God is giving? Are we Grumbling against God? Are we complaining against God? Are we angry with God? Are we angry with people around us? Or are we taking it in God's Holy Spirit fruits in peace and patience and denying ourselves, allowing God to do whatever he has to do through it all? <sighs> then God rewarded Daniel by even remembering his food. Can you imagine how a personal Lord God and Savior our Lord Jesus Christ is? And of course, the best person of faithfulness is Job. I need to read it because we know his story. Satan went before the, God, the Father and said, uh, the Almighty God and said, because, because, because you gave him all this, he is faithful to you. God allows Satan to, to do whatever he wants. Satan takes everything, even his family and wealth. Leaves him to as if die, but even in his that condition, Job never stops praising God. And at the end of it, God rewards him. My brothers and sisters, he rewards him with double. His latter was more, more greater than his former. The same way today, God is calling us. We don't have these big, big things that are happening, but whatever is happening is big for us in our life. It is so difficult when you have a sick person in the house. Day in and day out to work, to smile, to look after, to go out into the world and be Jesus in spite of the suffering one faces. In spite of sometimes some people have uh, financial difficulties, sicknesses, some people have problems in office. All these are things which are like that given to the past of, the, of Job, Daniel, of Noah, of all these people. But God saw the heart. How did they how were they in the heart in their heart when they were facing with troubles? He's not interested if you have failed or passed. He is interested if you have been faithful in your heart. Have you grumbled in your heart? Have you complained in your heart? Or have you submitted in res res resignation, in love to the Father to do whatever He is doing to purify you, to sanctify you, to help you to grow? Abraham is called the father of the faithful because he, because he had such faith so as to leave his home and go to get a place he didn't know where simply because he believed God had told him. So he left everything and he went if to fulfill the promise God had given him. This faithfulness, he didn't know where he was going, but he went in his obedience, in his trustworthiness to the Lord, his faithfulness. We see in the book of Numbers, sister, the book of Numbers, please, number, uh, book of Numbers, chapter 12, verses 7. Not so with my servant Moses, 
He is interested in all my house. Yes, God says that he has taken, he has God's house is entrusted to him. His, his, God's plan, God's vision, God's dream was entrusted to him because God had a plan. Abraham is our father. He's the patriarch. We are called Abraham's sons. He said he promised him the stars, as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand in the sea, that he would become the father of so many. And he went because he trusted God. He was faithful to God. We even see that in the book of Esther, we see in Esther what she did. She had the undying courage and loyalty to her people. She was so determined that she prayed and fasted and gained the strength of the spirit in her that she could go before her husband and acquire the scepter so that her people would be saved from the hands of the enemy. This is what God is calling you and me to do, to become intercessors, to become men and women of prayer, to become accountable for what God has given us, that we may do it and do it with all our heart. And we can do all things with Jesus who gives us strength. Because Jesus who is in us is stronger than he that is in the world. And as we live and move and have our being in him, my brothers and sisters, his spirit will guide us, his spirit will help us, his spirit will strengthen us. And we can overcome anything with his spirit living in us. We can be another Esther. We can be another Job. We can be another Abraham. We can be another Daniel. And even we see David. When he repented and came back to God, he was again so anointed. He had the anointing and he was so afraid of losing that anointing. After he, he sinned and came back to God with repentance, even when he was put in the presence of Saul who was asleep and he was told that Saul was now his greatest enemy, David could have easily taken out his sword and slayed Saul. But because he remembered, do not touch my anointed. He was faithful to God's word. He was faithful to, the, to this fact. He leaves that place and he flees. He does not give in to his emotions of wanting to finish Saul, who is his enemy, who wants to destroy him. Yes, my brothers and sisters, in our life, we have so many enemies coming against us in so many ways. How much do we feel against them? We mutter against them. We want to take our, get angry with them. We want to retaliate to them. We, get, we want to say things to them. But we need to remember one thing. We do not follow our emotions, but we follow the Holy Spirit of God who is in our hearts. And he is the one to give us the fruits, gifts and charisms. We ask him every day we need to ask him, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of love. Father in Jesus name, give me your Holy Spirit, give me your Holy Spirit, give me your Holy Spirit. We need nothing but the Holy Spirit because once we have the Holy Spirit, everything else will come. Because when we have the Holy Spirit, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and be faithful to him in everything we do. We become reliable. We become dependable. We become trustworthy. We become accountable. Yes, my brothers and sisters, last week I taught about the heart. I taught about Proverbs 4.23. Our hearts is a wellspring of life. We have to guard our hearts. That's the secret of life is to guard your heart. Because though the heart is the spring of living water which comes forth. The heart is also very devious. We do not follow our heart, but we follow the Holy Spirit who is in us. We follow his word. We follow what the church is telling us. We follow the Lord closely. We walk with the Lord closely. The secret of life, life is to guard our heart. What you and I have is the only thing we can give, my brothers and sisters. What we possess is what we can give. What we do not possess, we cannot give. Our outer reflects good things. We dress well, we look well. Maybe God has given us many gifts to sing in the choir, to lead the praise and worship, to preach the word of God, and to do all these things. And people looking at us from the outside says, wow, what a good person, what a great person. But no, my brothers and sisters, this is not what God sees he sees the innermost part of our hearts, our faithfulness to him, our holiness unto him, the goodness in our heart, which should project in the visible work that, and looks of our outer side. God is only interested in the love in, in our heart. Sister, can you please read?
Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 4, please. Yes. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Amen. 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 Yes, that is why we see the people of old when they were faithful to God, how God rewarded them. In the same way today, God is calling you and me to love and to be faithful. In fact, to wear this as jewels in us. Let the faithfulness, the holiness of God shine through us. Because he is faithful, he has called us and he will do it. Let the Holy Spirit inscribe it on our hearts daily. Implore the Holy Spirit to fill us, to allow Jesus to become more and more real to you and me. More real than our very selves itself. We see in Deuteronomy 7, 9, sister, please. Deuteronomy 7, verses 9. Our God is a faithful God, we see. Nine. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. So he is there to be with our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, if we become faithful to God. Remember the, the thief on the cross. On the right side. He did not know Jesus. He didn't know ministry. He didn't know obedience. He didn't know good things. He lived his life in sin. But because of that one moment of his recognition of God on the cross, he became faithful and he asked Jesus to forgive him. And what happens after that? It says in, in the theology and other things that that man who was on the cross who asked for forgiveness, his generations to come were saved because of that one faithful act of repentance on the cross to ask God to forgive him. And Jesus promises him that he'll be with him in paradise. He was rewarded and the generations to come were saved by his one act of repentance of faithfulness to coming back to God in spite of not knowing who God was. Can you imagine to that extreme of faithfulness God rewarded the generations to come of his life? How much more will God bless our generation? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change. When we are faithful to God, we stand also by people. God and man. We do not deny God and we do not, do not deny the people that God has put in our lives. We are faithful to the people who God has put into our lives. When our parents grow old, we don't throw them into homes. When there's a situation, we don't give that situation over to someone else in our family. You take care of it. We stand by our families. We stand by our church. We stand by each other, bearing with each other, lifting up each other. This is faithfulness, my brothers and sisters. Just as Jesus will never leave us or forsake us, he tells us to inscribe it on our hearts. We also have to, by way of our action and love and faithfulness, Stand by each other. Husbands and wives, sometimes it's so remarkable. 25 years, 30 years, 50 years, 60 years of married life. It's not as it's not easy. But when we see that, we give glory to God for his faithfulness in their life. We see in 2 Timothy, sister, please. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 16 and 17. Yes. Chapter 4, 16 and 17. Yes, sister. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Amen. Amen. So St. Paul also was so many times in such difficult situations. And he finds that the people, even in the court or wherever, 
you know, it just desert him. But one thing he, he proclaims that God never left him. God was always there before him by his side. My brothers and sisters, God is looking for faithful people to help, to generously stand by each other, to stand by his word, to be faithful in everything. You see Ruth's faithfulness. She stood by her mother-in-law even after her husband died. Though her mother-in-law said, go, leave me, go. But she said, no, she remained with her mother-in-law. And her faithfulness to her mother-in-law caught the eyes of Boaz. And Boaz, seeing her, loved her because of her faithfulness to her mother-in-law and married her, which her mother-in-law gave to Boaz. Ruth stood by the side of her mother-in-law and therefore we have to stand beside our loved ones, our mother-in-laws, our father-in-laws, our sister-in-laws, our brother-in-laws, our friends, our colleagues. We do not leave them. When they are in need, we stand by them. Do not change, my brothers and sisters, your mind or you be moody. Moody being moody is a very bad thing. You know, sometimes when you want to smile, we'll smile. When you want to help, we'll help. We want to do something, we do. If we don't feel like doing it, we won't do it. That is going with your emotions, your feelings. Feelings are very deceptive. They're not faithful to you. But make a decision to be faithful, my brothers and sisters. Not to be moody, but always to make the decision to be joyful. Mother Teresa would always say, in your joyful, you become like a net where you can catch many fish. In other words, you become the fishers of men. You get souls for the Lord. Everything is about souls, my brothers and sisters. By our faithfulness, we are actually becoming a testimony. We are becoming a witness so that people may see us and know Jesus, know the Father, know the Holy Spirit. We are becoming a net where we can catch people, catch the souls and bring them back to God because of the way we live and project who we follow, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we need to be joyful. We need to be approachable. Always be there when required. Let us read Lamentations, sister, please. Hey, Lamentations no. 3, 22 and 23. Three, sister. Yes, sister. 22, sister. 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. This is always be faithful, loyal, dependable, trustworthy. Do it every day as you remember this beautiful word. That the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Write it on your heart. Tell the Holy Spirit, yeah. write this in my heart. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. When it's written in our hearts, it is within our soul, it's within our spirit, it's within our breathing, it's in our lungs. And we, we breathe through it, we believe it, and we walk it, and we show it, and we become it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Yes, my brothers and sisters, God always rewards the faithful. Even when we face tests and trials, God wants you and me to see the reaction of our hearts, as I said, so that everything is about the heart. He only sees the heart and our heart should be filled with the Holy Spirit because what comes out of our heart is what we really are. So it's important to guard our hearts, to protect our hearts, to not give in to our emotions, but to be Make a decision to be holy, accountable, trustworthy, loyal, dependable, and faithful. Let us see 1 Corinthians 10 verses 13, sister. Yes. 1 Corinthians 10. Sixteen, sister. Yeah, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 13. One, no testing has overtaken you. That is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Amen. Can you imagine 
he gives us this testings and trials only so that we could grow and we could become holy and we could become more helpful to him for the souls to come back to him. But when he puts us through something, he never gives it beyond our strength. And he also gives us means and ways to come out of it. What a faithful God and a loving, dependable, trustworthy God we have. He never leaves us or forsakes us, as I said. Steadfast love is always with us. We see in Psalm 12, verses 1, sister. Yes. Help, O Lord, for there is no longer anyone who is godly. The faithful have disappeared from humankind. Yes, my brothers and sisters, as I said, there's a shortage of faithfulness now in the world. Everyone's becoming corrupt because of the situation that the world is in today. And our hearts are so weak, our fleshes are so weak. But God himself in the psalmist says that faithful people are disappearing. Therefore, make me straight, Lord, so that I can rise up to be a faithful one for you to use me. We also see in Proverbs 20, verses 6, sister. Yes. Many proclaim themselves loyal, but who can find one worthy of trust? Amen. Amen. Yes. Let us sit quietly sometimes and look into ourselves. We always proclaim ourselves faithful, loyal, but look into the nitty gritty details of our life in our quiet moments in prayer. And let us write down anything and everything that actually as we see into the illumination of the Holy Spirit who will help us when we ask him to, to show the light in those areas of our life where we proclaim to be faithful, but actually we are lacking. Right. So that we can submit that to God, write it down and make it into a piece of paper and submit it every day to the Lord and then go back into your heart and check where, which one have you overcome and cut it out and offer a sign of praise and honor and glory to God. One by one, this is how we get rid of our sins, of unholiness, of unfaithfulness. We have to deal with it first before we go to confession. Our first confession is with ourselves in our private prayer time, personal prayer time with the Lord to see into our hearts, to come before the Lord and repent and cry and ask him to forgive us, to replace that with his Holy Spirit gift and truth and charism. And the next step is to go for confession where you reveal your sin and take the, uh, the confession and do the penance. The first introspection is with your personal prayer. It's very important, my brothers and sisters, to grow in holiness and faithfulness to, unto the Lord. We see Peter, he loved the Lord so much, but what did he do? He also was so unfaithful. Three times he denies Jesus. Of course, he repents. He, in his quiet moments, he knows what he's done and he repents. He asks God to forgive him. He's forgiven. He's made the first pope. The church was built on him. Became rock. He got the reward for coming back into faithfulness. Jesus calls us to be faithful, my brothers and sisters. Even if we slip and fall, he does not want it. He wants us to come back and to come back and to ever come back. The Holy Spirit will always help us. He will never leave us or forsake us. His word tells us. We write it on our hearts. You see in Philippians 2, uh, sorry. Yes, uh, sister, please. Philippians yes. 2, 19 and 21. Yes. I'm going to I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon so that I may be cheered by news of you. I have no mm -hmm. one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not these of Jesus Christ. Amen. See here, St. Paul, he is giving Timothy such a praise. 
as being a faithful one. There was no one like Timothy, St. Paul says for him. Timothy understood St. Paul's heart and St. Paul only trusted him as being faithful. So he couldn't trust some work to him. He couldn't trust conveying messages to the people and the other churches of what he saw St. Paul doing and teaching. Why? Because Timothy was a faithful one. Can God find us to be faithful, to entrust us also with his heart, with his work for the salvation of mankind? Let us ask ourselves that in our personal prayer. Unfaithful people are going to increase, my brothers and sisters. We need discernment to decipher who is who. And we also have to see within ourselves, what are we? Let us read, Sister Matthew 24, 10. Yes. Then many will fall away and they will betray one another and hate one another. Yes. Many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Faithfulness is going to become more and more scarce. We have to prepare ourselves to be that faithful one that God is looking for. Let us go ahead and see in 1 Corinthians 4 verses 17. Yes. For this reason, I sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ Jesus, as I teach them everywhere in every church. Praise the Lord. See, once again, St. Paul talks to the church about, about Timothy. I am able to carry out good works because of the faithful help of Timothy gives. Can you imagine? Huh? Can Jesus tell that of us? I can do my work through this one, through that one, through the other one, because he's standing by me. He's going with me through thick and thin, through ups and downs, through joys and sorrows. He's watching me. He's learning from me. I can entrust him with the plan of salvation that I have. St. Paul says, when I leave, I can entrust the work to, to Timothy. What God has not established, it will not stand, my brothers and sisters. So we have to get ourselves established in the Lord through our accountability to him, through our faithfulness to him. Then only he can entrust us with bigger work. Because whatever God started, he's faithful to complete it, my brothers and sisters. When St. Paul would introduce anybody in the crowd, he would always start, this is a faithful man of God. How do we introduce people? Many a time we say this person is like this, like this, giving all the glories. No. The best way to introduce anyone to anyone is he is faithful. I can trust him. And I can, uh, I can bear my heart to him and he can bear his heart to you all on my behalf. That is a faithful one. We see so much in Genesis 12 and Genesis 16. When we see Hagar running away from Sarah, her mistress. Why? Because Sarah was ill-treating her. And when Sarah was running and running, God tells Sarah, somewhere in Genesis 12 and Genesis 16, go back to your mistress. Surrender to her. Submit to her. And be faithful to her. Because God tells Hagar, in time to come, I will bless you. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. He wanted her to be yielded so that when the time came, God never forgot Hagar when she was in the wilderness with her son Ishmael. From his lineage, he made a new generation, a new race. He blessed them. So God rewards everyone who is faithful to him, who is submissive to him, who yielded to God. So faithfulness is the key to ministry, my brothers and sisters, to doing God's will service to men and to gain the souls back to the Lord. It is the key, my precious ones, our heart, our faithfulness, to guard our heart with faithfulness. This loyalty, my brothers and sisters, leads to cheating, falsehood and destruction. Being untruthful and bitterness and resentment and anger, unforgiveness, all these things will come in. Those who deny themselves will be lifted up. 
It says in 1 Timothy, let's read 1 Timothy, sister, please. 1 Timothy 1 verses 12. Yes. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Amen. Wow, isn't that, would you like to hear Jesus say? That's, yes. I have found you faithful and that's why I have appointed you to my service. Anyone who's in the true service of God is because God has found them faithful. So if you and I want to be used by God, we have to better become more holy from within in faithfulness and loyalty, accountability, dependability, trustworthiness. If God is using you and me, it's because God finds you and me faithful unto him. God called Jeremiah from his mother's womb. God opens heaven and blesses us when he finds us to be faithful. And Jeremiah became such a big prophet of God, though he didn't want to. We need not envy anyone for what gifts they have or what they are doing or how well they are progressing. We need to work on the gifts that God has given us. We have to be faithful stewards of what he has given us according to our ability. We see that person is better than us, that person is doing this. No, let us be busy with our own hearts and souls so that our hearts and souls can become the net where we can catch souls unto the, unto the Lord, become fishers of men. That's why he tells his disciples, come, I will make you fishers of men. Leave your boat and the catching the fish. Come and catch men. The greatest gift that God can give you and me is his presence, my brothers and sisters. Everything is about his presence. We do not pray without his presence. We do not work without his presence. It becomes a dry bone if we do so. If we go to, into personal prayer, we ask for repentance, we worship God, we allow his presence to take us over. When his Holy Spirit comes, then only that becomes favorable in the eyes of God. When we go to do a work, we first work on ourselves so that work may be purified. Then we go to do it, it may become something beautiful for God. We do not do things out of duty. We do not do things because we are going to be paid. We do not do things that we want praise. We need to look into ourselves and do things that we may be found faithful unto God in holiness and trustworthiness, not to gain our own accolades, not to gain our own favors, but only to be favored by God who sees our heart when we do things out of faithfulness unto him. And he gives us the greatest treasure, which is God's presence. That's why we see the psalmist in 27 says, one thing I ask of the Lord, that one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of my life. Without his presence, we are null and void. We are finished. We have to be faithful unto God and the treasure we receive from God in return is the presence of God. Because when we have the presence of God, we can be like Peter. When we can walk, a shadow can fall on someone and they can be healed. Not because of you and me. Because it will be no longer you and me who live it, but it will be God, Jesus, who lives in and through me and you. So wherever we go, we may be another Jesus to them because of our decision to remain faithful to the commandments of the Lord, our decision to be faithful to holiness, to the fruits of the Spirit, and to grow closer in the resemblance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, my precious brothers and sisters, this is the compliment we want from God himself. When the there were 12 disciples, when Judas betrayed Jesus and left and he went and hung himself, that space was vacant. What was the kind of person Jesus required? Who is there to fill in this place, he says. Jesus wanted someone who is faithful and moving with him. Is moving with Jesus, being agreeable to Jesus, being yielded to Jesus, being submissive to Jesus, being faithful to Jesus. And that is how they choose the one, the other one to fill in the gap. In this agreement with the Lord, if God agrees and we walk in the will of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit according to the word of God, we will be raised up by brothers and sisters as the one Jesus can call as faithful, who is so scarce to find these days. 
the one who remains with us through this thick and thin through our life is the Holy Spirit. And we have people in our life who we need to treasure and appreciate if they are such types of people who never leave us but help us along the way. God looks for the faithful one. The Lord looks in our heart. The test of faithfulness, the story of the talents, that is the test of faithfulness. According to the ability they were given and they each produced 10 became 25 became 10 but the, uh, the one that got the least hid it. We are not called to be hiding. God does not want us to hide even the littlest thing that God has given us. We need to use it for his glory so that he can reward us with more. To whom much is given, much is required. And if you do not refuse it, whatever you have also will be taken away from you and me. We must not become weary of doing good because in, a, in good time we will reap the harvest. We have to be faithful through it all. We are never to be lazy or lackadaisical or procrastinate. We do not procrastinate. Put it off for some other time. We need to do it now. Whatever we do, we do it now. The power of the Holy Spirit. We do not hide. We come out into the open to be that faithful one. My, my brothers and sisters, what you use that will increase. Whatever you use, that will increase. Whatever God has given you and you do not use, that will decrease and everything else with it. Your whole life will decrease. So let us look into ourselves and see in our personal prayer time where and what we are doing, what should increase in us, what should decrease in us, and what should we become to the glory of God. Let us see Luke 16.10. Sister, please read Luke 16, 10. Yes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. Amen. So wherever we work, we work unto God in every field that God has given us not as a matter of duty and as the one who's going to get a salary in front of our bosses and authorities. We work under the main authority and that is the authority of God Almighty to the power of His Holy Spirit. Whatever we do, we do it with love and faithfulness to the best of our ability. Whether we are seen, whether we are appreciated or whether we are not, we do not look for notice Oh, he has forgotten to thank me. Oh, he has forgotten to put my name there. Oh, he has forgotten to tell me this. Oh, he, has, he, he told everyone, but he left me out. All that is rubbish. Let us just let it go. That is self, self, self. Me, I, my. We look to bigger things, which is Jesus, which is you, which is the other. That is what God is calling us to be faithful. Let us what God is watching us also. His divine eyes are always upon us. He is infinite and all-knowing, all-seeing. Let us look after and take care of God's given work. <clears throat> Very important, my brothers and sisters. God is also testing you and me. Listen carefully on how faithful you and I are with other people's things. Other people's things, how faithful we are with. Do we take care of other people's things the way we take care of our things? Or because it's other people's things, we become careless. He sees that integrity in you and me, that trustworthiness, that, that integrity, whether we take care of others or other people's things the way we take care of ours and our own things. God will test you and me on the natural things as well. Let us read uh, Luke 16. Sorry. Just a minute. Actually, the whole thing is on Luke uh, 16, 10 to 15. We we'll just read it once, sister, before we finish with this part. Luke 16, yes. 10 to 15. It's the same thing we hear, but let it take root in our hearts. Let the seed fall on the good soil. Let it be written on our hearts. So that we will not decide, we will not go away from it. Yes, sister, please read. Thank Whoever you. is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. 
And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest well, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Pharisees who are lovers of money heard all this and they ridiculed him. So he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is prized by human beings is an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. See, this is so important. We have to take care of the other things, other people's things as well. And here we come now <clears throat> to how we handle our money. <clears throat> God takes our test. We do not trust money, but we put our trust in God. There are worldly riches, but there is a bigger home, our eternal home, where we keep our eyes on. We do not look at what we have here, but we keep our eyes and hearts in heaven. As I said, a friend of mine is going to Australia in four years, four months time. But her heart is already gone to Australia. Whenever you talk to her now, she's only talking about what she's going to do there, what she's going to live there, like where she's going to stay, what work she's going to do. Her heart is already gone to Australia while she's still here in India. In the same way, while we are still on this earth, our heart should always already be gone to our eternal home. What we are going to do there when we go there, we are going to enjoy our life with the Lord. We are going to sit by his, his right side. We are going to sing and we are going to praise. We are going to worship. We are going to meet our loved ones. This is so important not to be interested in our worldly things, our money. But we should handle our money as what we have in our hand. We should pay our tithes, give to the Lord, give to the poor, give for evangelization. Look after the money that God has given us. Save also. And live a life pleasing to God. What money is in your hand is your test and my test. From now on, what money God has given you in your bank balance, in your hand, in your salary, whatever. Take it as a test of faithfulness. Of how you are going to use this money carefully. And how you are going to use other people's things and money too. When you are entrusted with it. When we spend so much money... And buying a little gold, my brothers and sisters, one small ring or one small earring. We spend little money in buying that. But our eyes, if it's in heaven, when we go there, the streets of heaven are made with gold. Why are we only in that small little thing of the worldly little gold with so much money we spend? Keep so much faithfulness and so much love and so much holiness for our eternal home where we will see roads and streets of gold. Therefore, let us from today on be faithful, my brothers and sisters. And as I end, I just end the way we need to be faithful so the world isn't desperate for us to live out our calling with humility, gentleness, boldness, and a servant's heart of faithfulness. We are going to make mistakes. We will, all, we, we will not always do what is right. We may be in a position that our, our way may uh, go over our heads or we may just be alone and do something wrong. But we need to repent and come back to God in faithfulness. We go with the Holy Spirit who will guide us, equip us and protect us. We serve a God who has chosen us. He has a plan for us. We can trust him as the Holy Spirit leads us in our calling of faithfulness. We must work, walk in humility and alertness. And not let the evil one get us in any way as we have sought to grow in faith and remain faithful to the calling God has invited you and me to live out. Let us remember to read God's word daily. To let the Holy Spirit inscribe the word of God in our heart. We let the Holy Spirit to help us to be obedient to the word of God. To listen to the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord says, why do you call me Lord, Lord and do not do the things I say? 
We have to be faithful to the word of God as we listen. We also have to obey. We have to pray constantly. And more we pray, the more we are strengthened with our relationship with God and others. As we strengthen our relationship with God, we are more able to hear his voice, understand his calling, and be of use to him for the salvation of mankind to get souls. That's why we pray, rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks and everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus in you. We worship and praise in the Lord that he may bless our bread and water. He's a faithful God. And we seek wise counsel and submit to others and hold on, hold to accountability. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is what God is calling you and me to do, to be willing to submit to authorities, to pray for discernment in choosing and to be accountable for what God has given in our hands without guidance of the Holy Spirit and the people of counsel also, we can go astray. We Sometimes God gives us people to help us and we cannot hear his voice. Yes, my brothers and sisters, let us, let us turn our hearts and our minds and our souls to the Lord. Let us close our eyes and for a moment just let us say this little prayer as we close. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let us close with prayer. Lord, your word says, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. God, these are your words, Lord. We pray it back to you today. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to the power of the Holy Spirit, to the intercession of Mama Mary, that you give us the steadfast love and faithfulness because we never ever want to forsake you. Help us to bind us around our neck and write on the tablets of our hearts so that we may favor with you, Lord Jesus, that we may get souls, Lord, that we may bring souls into you by the reflection of your presence in our life, by being true witnesses and a testimony of faithfulness. And Lord, you have said, blessed is the servant whom the master will find when he comes doing what he is supposed to be doing. Yes, Lord, help us to do what you want us to do. Whatever talents you have given us, whatever you have given us, whatever work you are entrusting to us, entrusted to us, that we may carry it out with faithfulness, with the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness, because without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing, Lord. Lord Jesus, we need you, Lord, more than anything, Lord. Give us your spirit, Lord Jesus, because you who are faithful in Thessalonians, you say, he who is faithful, who has called you, he will do it, Lord. And we believe it, Lord, that you have called us Lord, to be faithful. You will do it. We submit to you. We surrender to you. Give us your Holy Spirit that we may be faithful instruments in your hands, Lord. We won't want to live anymore, but we want to live for you, Lord. Enable us. Help us when we meet with these temptations and trials and testings. Help us to overcome, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit, of faithfulness, of trusting you. Enable us, Lord, to be holy like you are holy, Lord. Oh, Lord, we believe that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness. Let the Holy Spirit write this in your heart, in my heart today, my brothers and sisters, so that we will know that the steadfast love of the Lord is there. He will never leave us or forsake us. He is a faithful God, and he wants us to be faithful too. We make all these prayers for us and our families and children and grandchildren and loved ones and all millions of people who want to be faithful to God. Enable us, Father, in the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, to Mama Mary and all the angels and saints of God, we pray in Jesus' Amen. holy name. Amen. 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 Amen